The Maritime Heritage Alliance welcomes you to witness the creation of a work of art and the recreation of a piece of history, the schooner Madeline. While thousands like her sailed the Great Lakes in the 1800s, the original schooner Madeline played a pivotal role in the history of the lakes. In the winter of 1850-51, the original schooner's crew hired a young Traverse City settler to teach them to read and write. In net effect, the Madeline was Traverse City's first schoolhouse, but the resultant effect of that quiet winter changed history. Three of the original crew were the brothers Fitzgerald, whose names would become synonymous with the glory days of the Great Lakes shipping industry in the years that followed. The great-grandson of one would lend his name to the ill-fated ore carrier Edmund Fitzgerald, which sank on Lake Superior in 1975. The Madeline also played a part in the final days of the only kingdom ever to exist in the United States. After the assassination of King Strang on Beaver Island, she ferried Irish settlers to the island, many descendants of which live there to this day. Sharing the common concern that this kind of rich maritime history was slipping away, a small but determined group of boat and history buffs formed the Maritime Heritage Alliance in 1982 with the goal of collecting, preserving, restoring, and replicating artifacts of the Great Lakes' colorful past. Almost at once, the group began work on a symbol to represent them. The chosen project was a 20-foot Mackinac boat, once a more common sight than even the great schooners. Volunteers labored through the summer building the small boat. Just before launching, a little girl named Grace Louise offered master builder Bob Corr a half-eaten cookie at the end of an especially tiring day, and hence the boat became the Gracie L. On a chilly November day, the first flagship of the MHA slid off the trailer and into the waters of Grand Traverse Bay. With her trademark downwarped bowsprit, canvas sails, and gaff schooner rig, Gracie L. became the first Mackinac to slice through these waters in over 50 years. The success and publicity surrounding the Gracie Project greatly expanded the interest in and awareness of Great Lakes maritime history, and Alliance membership grew. With this new infusion of people came new ideas. Armed with this fresh spirit, boundless determination, and almost no money, the group sought a new project. The story of the original schooner Madeline surfaced, and everyone agreed no other vessel could better represent the MHA's philosophy of keeping the maritime heritage of the Great Lakes alive. Soon after, the attic floor of the Great Lakes Maritime Academy became a huge drawing board, where Madeline's lines were lofted to full-size patterns. The Maritime Academy also granted short-term use of a small tract of land on which to construct the ship. The first shipment of lumber arrived by truck in the spring of 1985. Much of the material had been selectively taken as standing trees from the woods of northern Michigan to lend an even greater accuracy to the replica. The builders, mostly volunteers, confidently began assembling the frames to the huge white oak keel. Within two years, everyone believed then, she would be a ship. These hardy men and women would find, however, that Madeline's legacy as an educator was not over. She would teach us that to recreate history is more than symbolic. It is a personal challenge. Before the Madeline would sail, she would force us all to look deep within ourselves. To tap resources of will and determination few of us knew we had. She would bring us together as a family and galvanize an entire community to see her through to completion. Just as the original Madeline had shaped history, her namesake would indelibly mark all who labored to build her.
this project is is more than just the Maritime Heritage Alliance. This is this is a community project. This is Traverse City. This is capturing some of the history and involving the entire community in, in a project that's going to have long long range effects. It's going to be here with us a long time. Everybody's going to have a chance to use it. I came here when they had open house back in 1985, I think around June, and uh, I, I like to keep busy doing things, and I always have been interested in, in schooners. Even years ago when I, I used to beachcomb with my children, we'd go up along Lake Michigan and we'd see relics of uh, uh, schooners that were wrecked on the shore, and we often would wonder, you know, oh, what part of the ship was this, you know, was this a part of the deck or part of the frame or, or whatever, and then now I can see the relationship of those pieces that we used to see because we're building a, a vessel very typical to that and, and we're using a frame construction with plank on frame and, and you can see, uh, hey, this looks like a piece of that driftwood you used to find. It keeps me busy doing something, and uh, mentally and physically, and I think that's uh, very important for a person to be doing that type of thing to keep in good shape. This gives me an opportunity to associate with people from different walks of life, where one man was a kind of a a salesman and another's a school teacher and another's a boat builder and uh, that type of thing and so you get a good cross-section of people. It has been said by some sage in the past that the schooner is the most beautiful artifact uh, ever designed by man and I think most of us involved in this project to uh, have, have that kind of, kind of an idea. Basically it was a bunch of retired guys that built this boat. And it's beautiful, and uh, it's just just amazing to, to see these guys, uh, the things that they've accomplished. And seeing the uh, the uh, smiles in the faces and the and the children, you'd see them. They'd look and they'd say "awesome" and things like that. You know, they were just amazed that something like this was uh, around. You know, that they could uh, actually get aboard and go back in time, so to speak. Different people bring different strengths and it, it and if you sit in, around and watch you can see how everybody has their kind of part and uh, from that standpoint it's been a real unique we're getting volunteers on this project who are retirees who want to do this kind of work and some of them are skilled, some of them aren't. They're good workers when they get here, and uh, these guys are great. Well, I guess the reason I got started was uh, Marty Mel killed, and Ed Brown both belonged to the United Methodist Church. And they got after me, and so I came down, because I am interested in, in boats, so I agreed to come down for one day. And one day worked into two days, three days, four days, I didn't think it would take five years. I didn't think I was committing five years, but as it turned out, it was five years, but it was very interesting and challenging, and I'm very happy that I made the election to do that. People began coming from as far as way as the Detroit, Detroit and the Jackson region to join it. We knew that, that the outcome would be successful. My involvement in the Maritime Heritage Alliance was a desire to be around boats, be around the water, and we all know that everyone in the community should somehow be involved in some sort of a public service. And what better way 
than to do something that you love. If you do something you love, you're going to do a good job of it. The, uh, we feel that the learning process that was engendered by this project uh, is probably one of the greatest contributions. Uh, that is the, here we had 165 plus volunteers with very little knowledge of the, uh, the task that to be performed. And we had uh, welders, we, we had uh, cable splicers, we had uh, uh, all kinds of uh, wood, uh, people who work with wood in many different manners. All, all these talents we were able to harness and combine and, uh, and to think that they were all uh, given free gratis, I think established a, a milestone in the community, if, if not in uh, the country. Without Ed Brown uh, doing what he did and Bob Corr sticking to the project for five years, and he had no idea it was going to take that long. If either one of those people would have uh, backed out, it would have created a, a real problem. If you have 80 units of effort to perform, then Ed, in a loving way, would the next day tell you, let's get those 85 units of effort and do something with them. That's really what made this go. From a personal standpoint, I've always been interested in uh, maritime history and the and building of ships. Uh, it, it can be a real unique opportunity to just be a part of building something, to be able to spend your time with uh, a lot of hand tools, uh, spend your time with a lot of uh, people from different stations and walks of life that bring together a lot of different areas of, of expertise to be building something that you normally don't see being built. And, uh, you, and to be able to build, to be part of a whole process of building something this big uh, with, with a wide variety of people is just, just something really in, unique. My family has a great tradition of schooners. My grandfather built a schooner in Bay City to transport his family and his uh, farm produce to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, where uh, my father started his family and I was one of five children. Spent my time, say, all my spare time that I could squeeze out of uh, schools and chores say, sailing the St. Mary's River. Money, like any of uh Nonprofit owner is, is always a problem, but uh, uh, it's done through a lot of donations. Uh, we have sales here that we sell uh, your usual t shirts and other memorabilia, souvenirs, and things. A lot of energy is spent through uh, not only the people you, you would see here at the yard, but uh, people behind the scenes that are contacting uh, businesses and other people that are interested in, in maritime history. So, this is all done through uh, donations. Well, back when we built the Gracie L, and it was in 1982. Uh, the group started with no money and no assets, and yet with determination and uh, enthusiasm, the Graciel was built and launched. And uh, after a few years, the group still didn't have any money or real assets, uh, but felt the need to build another boat. So in '85, uh, we stumbled on the story of the Madeline and felt that would be the perfect vessel to build. It was a bigger deal than the, the Graciel, and, uh, and it was a, it's, it's a statement. It's a, it's a 92 foot schooner. It's, a, it's not the kind of thing you can miss on the waterfront. Um, but the group hadn't really uh, generated any cash or any large assets, so it's, it, uh, it had no reserves for just starting a vessel like this. But we felt the, uh, the need for a vessel like this on the waterfront. And at this point in time, there were no schooners at all in West Bay. And uh, so we were excited about the notion of having a 92-foot schooner in the bay. Armed with the same enthusiasm and motivation, and yet no money, we decided to build the Madeline. Uh, the highlight of each day, I think, was the lunch, especially when it got into the winter months. And we did work most of the winter months around our uh, stove in the old shack there. And sometimes, as many as 14, I remember I brought uh, 10 pounds of venison down one time, 
and we had 14 or 15 that particular day, but we usually had five or six people at least, and sometimes more. Visitors would also come in. We'd sit around the stove and tell tall tales. And uh, other than that, we, we kept pretty busy. In fact, we didn't do a lot of talking when we were working. We had fun working, but the, the fun was the work and the accomplishment that we were making. Madeline's twin white pine masts were donated by the Michigan Department of Natural Resources as living trees from the Sand Lakes Quiet Area of eastern Grand Traverse County. Seeing the value of the project, the DNR selected two prize virgin pines that were growing here even when the original Madeline was sailing. On a snowy day, the task of moving two huge virgin pines in one piece from the middle of the woods in the middle of the winter created a memorable adventure. Thanks to the efforts of two powerful loaders donated from a local excavation firm, the masts eventually found their way to the construction site. with a fate uh, of luck of some sort, things seem to come in place. Uh, somebody's either going through the yard or, or knows somebody that has those resources available. And it, it just seems to, uh, to get done. And we've seen this in, uh, in uh, many situations with, with, uh, with the materials. Uh, you get a piece of specialized equipment that would uh, cost a lot of money and then our finances would be uh, very very small or in that and uh, through 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 luck it just uh, seems to happen and come and this has been the story of this uh, this whole project when I visit the Madeline these days and think back then I visualize how everyone put in their personal talent, their, what they wanted to contribute. I can see John Dost with his, his face so earnest at what he's doing. And then you look at every person. John was just an example. You look at every person that's there, and somehow you realize, that's my friend because we're playing with the same toys, we're serving the same community. Some of the things that have happened here is sometimes is, uh, with the big reversible drills that we use is sometimes somebody would uh, put it in reverse and uh, get somebody that wasn't familiar and uh, get them one of the long augers and, and try to drill a hole. Uh, but again, sometimes it wasn't so funny also because you'd be up here on the scaffolding and be stretched right out and you'd be pushing on the drill and it wouldn't be drilling. And as a matter of fact, one time the person took the drill bit out and went down and sharpened it and put it back in the drill bit and, and man, just pushed and put a bar on it and, and uh, was struggling and it was one of those hot days and it was sweating and then finally somebody probably yelled up to him and said, hey, why don't you put it in uh, forward speed? And sure enough, somebody had left the, the drill in, in reverse. It's interesting, of course, to see the construction of a, of a ship from uh, laying of the keel to the, to the finished product and uh, the, uh, the way they adapt uh, new tools to an old trade. It's, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see this. And I, I enjoy working with the fellows. They're uh, laid back. They're, they're sincere. They're a good group to work with, conscientious. Uh, just a nice group of fellows. Good environment. We 
We were fortunate to be in on probably almost every detail of the entire construction of that vessel, which was, uh, which I, I feel today was a real privilege. Because it was a, a project that, uh, that the visit visitors were interested in, and we had lots of them, and every different kind you can think of from, from all over the states and some foreign countries, in fact. A couple of volunteers from Lansing hand carved the name boards for the schooner. The thought of this type of finish work on a vessel that for so long had been somewhat abstract really got people excited. I think the most exciting thing, we had several, I think, milestones. Uh, I remember the one we took a picture, it was, uh, I think it was February 20th, 20th, and I believe it was 1987, when we put the last plank on. But the real excitement was the day of the launch. Now, this uh, fellow that did do the uh, launch for us was, of course, a, an expert in his field. And, uh, of course, he even weighed our vessel for us, which we were all anxious to see how much it weighed. We did have uh, rain when we painted the bottom, and... Uh, it was a little fall weather, but uh, if you're a sailor, you got to be tough. That's part of the part of the deal. It was an exciting day, but uh, it was just a lot of people running in circles and screaming and shouting and <laughs> getting things done, and, you know, in its own way. Of all of our five years of work, I mean, this was the climax uh, of of our work and it was a very exciting day and fortunately we had many people to uh, observe it at that time. Well, I, I noticed I worked in uh, around the crowd there and it was, I don't know how many, but there must have been two or three thousand people there and uh, you could see heads as far as you could see almost and I think that it appeared that they were enjoying it as much as we who had built the boat were enjoying it almost. It, uh, uh, it was a great event. A group of our guys, somebody called the Men of the Madeline, sang some pretty salty songs. We invited Jerry and Francis Olson, who were incredibly supportive from the start, to be our official dignitaries. As the Madeline was lowered into Grand Traverse Bay by two huge cranes, the builders, volunteers, and members anxiously watched with all the emotion of expectant parents. After five years in the making, Madeline's real journey was just beginning. The keel touched the water on the afternoon of June 24, 1990. Madeline sat smartly on her designed water line, and her planks gradually swelled to seal out the inland seas 
that were now her home. As the crowd went back to their summer activities, the builders went right to work on the final step in the process, the rigging of Madeline's masts and sails. In the nautical tradition, coins were placed under the base of each mast, one of which was an 1845 penny to represent the launching year of the original Madeline. Catches the fish and brings them home to Liza. People ask me what, what it's like to sail Madeline, and I really don't have any comparison to, to it. if it sails like a traditional schooner or not. I've, I've sailed some, some fairly old boats, but nothing as old as Madeline's design. But she sails well. Um, she's uh, long on the keel and doesn't turn readily. Um, doesn't sail like a J24. But uh, she's a lot of fun to sail. She's very responsive under sail. Um, she likes 15, 20 knots of breeze just, just fine. And we got into some fairly sloppy weather off of Beaver Island, and, and she uh, held her own, and it's a lot of fun. The schooner Madeline. Wood, iron, rope, canvas. This is what she is made of. This in the hearts of hundreds who participated in construction. Hundreds more members who wished they could have and the thousands of individuals, corporations, and foundations who contributed the financial resources to complete her. Everyone, it seems, had a different reason to want to be close to this project, yet everyone also shared a common focus for Madeline's future, to continue on as a platform of learning. For the children, she will provide a window to the past, giving them a clearer understanding of where they came from. For adults, she will teach the value of grace and courage, determination, and strength. For the elderly, she will kindle fond memories of those great ships that were her ancestors. And for everyone, she will remind us that the quest for knowledge and the spirit of adventure is boundless. Mm -hmm. 